John Reynolds trudged home after another gruelling day at the office. The chilly autumn air gnawed at his exposed skin as he fumbled with his keys, finally pushing his way into the quiet sanctuary of his apartment. The city outside was already asleep, blanketed in silence as the clock inched toward midnight. Routine was his comfort, the only thing that kept him grounded. He shrugged off his coat, kicked off his shoes, and threw last night's leftovers into the microwave. The familiar hum filled the tiny kitchen, lulling him into a trance as he stared into the rotating glow. After a tasteless dinner and a quick rinse of the dishes, he made his way to his bedroom. His worn pyjamas hung loosely as he slipped into them, the old wooden floor creaking beneath his tired steps. He collapsed onto his bed, the soft warmth of the blankets a welcome relief. The clock read 11.58pm in harsh red digits, casting a faint glow into the darkened room. Exhausted, John's eyes began to close, but just as he was drifting off, a low, almost imperceptible hum vibrated through the air, jarring him awake. He opened his eyes, blinking in confusion. The red glow from the clock seemed to spread, intensifying until it filled the entire room. What the... John muttered. Sitting up, the glow grew brighter, swirling into a deep crimson that pulsed like a heartbeat. In the centre of his room, the air seemed to ripple, twisting like a distorted reflection in a pond. The light condensed into a swirling vortex, a circle of shimmering red that seemed to tear through the fabric of reality itself. Beyond the rift, John could see the vague outlines of cobblestone streets, shrouded in thick fog. Whistles echoed faintly from the other side, followed by distant, panicked shouts. John's heart pounded as he got out of bed, drawn to the portal like a moth to a flame. The scene beyond felt both familiar and impossibly distant, like something from a nightmare or an old black and white film. Without thinking, he stepped closer, the chill from the portal prickling his skin. The pull was sudden, like an invisible hand yanking him forward. John let out a gasp as he was dragged through the portal, the world around him collapsing into darkness. The sensation of falling was swift, and when he hit the ground, it was hard and cold beneath him. Disoriented, he scrambled to his feet, the fog thick around him. Gone were the familiar walls of his bedroom. Now he stood on a damp cobblestone street, the air thick with the acrid smell of smoke and decay. Dim gas lamps flickered in the mist, casting a sickly yellow light. What? Where am I? John whispered, panic clawing at his throat. The distant sound of whistles and shouts grew louder, the air vibrating with an urgent energy. He spun around, trying to make sense of his surroundings. It felt like he had stepped into another world, a grim, shadowed version of Victorian London. Footsteps echoed behind him, quick and desperate. John turned to see a figure emerging from the fog, a man with wild eyes and blood smeared across his face and hands. In his grip was a long curved knife, dripping crimson. Out of my way, the man snarled, his voice a ragged hiss. John froze, rooted to the spot as fear gripped him. The crazed man's eyes locked onto him, and without hesitation, he lunged. The knife slashed through the air, catching John in the side. Pain exploded through him, and he staggered back, clutching the wound. The world around him blurred, the cold seeping into his bones as blood poured from his side. The man grinned, his eyes glinting with madness, and struck again, plunging the knife deep into John's chest. John gasped, a choked scream escaping his lips, but no one was there to hear him. The sounds of the city, the whistles, the shouts, were growing louder. The knife-wielding man looked over his shoulder, the thrill of the hunt giving way to sudden urgency. In the distance, shadows loomed, voices shouting as they drew closer, but instead of fleeing down the foggy streets, the blood-soaked man turned his gaze back to the shimmering portal that still hung in the air. His eyes widened with a mixture of confusion and twisted delight. Without a moment's hesitation, he sprinted toward it. 
his blood-streaked coat flaring behind him like a pair of dark wings. John, gasping his last breaths on the cold cobblestones, could only watch in horror as the man leapt through the glowing rift. The portal pulsed violently, the red light intensifying, and then, with a deafening roar, it snapped shut, leaving nothing but the cold, foggy street in its wake. The last thing John heard before the darkness took him was the frantic shouts of the approaching mob and the shrill sound of police whistles. Too late to save him, or to stop the monster that had just crossed into a new world. Mark Thompson pushed open the front door to his modest suburban home, the warm glow of the kitchen light spilling out to greet him. The familiar scent of dinner filled his nostrils, bringing a brief smile to his tired face. His wife Sarah glanced up from the stove, a look of relief washing over her. "'You're home late,' she said, concern edging her voice. "'Yeah, work was brutal today,' Mark replied, shrugging off his coat and hanging it on the hook. "'I swear, those reports will be the death of me.' He leaned down to kiss her cheek before heading to the dining table, where his two kids were finishing their homework. After the usual chatter about school and cartoons, Mark sat down for a quick dinner, though his exhaustion was clear. He forced himself through the meal, wanting nothing more than to crawl into bed. As he put his empty plate in the sink, he turned to Sarah, giving her a tired smile. I'm beat. I think I'll turn in early tonight, he said, rubbing his neck. All right, just try to get some rest, she replied. You've been pushing yourself too hard. Mark nodded and made his way upstairs the weight of the day pressing heavily on his shoulders. The kids were getting ready for bed, and after a quick good night, he slipped into his bedroom, the quiet darkness offering him a much-needed reprieve. Changing into his pyjamas, he climbed into bed, letting out a long, relieved sigh. The digital clock on his nightstand blinked, 11.45pm. Mark turned off the bedside lamp and settled in the silence of the house soothing him as he closed his eyes. But just as he was about to drift off, something strange caught his attention. A faint light flickered from the corner of his room, barely noticeable at first. Mark opened his eyes, squinting into the darkness. The light grew brighter, swirling like a miniature cyclone. He sat up, confusion turning to curiosity as the swirling light expanded, forming a glowing portal. What the hell? He whispered, his voice barely more than a breath. The portal pulsed with an unnatural bluish-green light, shimmering like the surface of a disturbed pond. Mark's heart pounded in his chest, both terrified and entranced by the impossible sight. He leaned forward, trying to make sense of what he was seeing. Beyond the swirling edges, he could make out the outline of trees, a dense, shadowy forest. There was something eerie about it, something that made his skin crawl. Compelled by an inexplicable force, Mark climbed out of bed and approached the portal. The wooded landscape on the other side seemed to call to him, the cool air seeping through and carrying with it the scent of damp earth and moss. He reached out a tentative hand, but the moment his fingers touched the shimmering edge, he was yanked forward. The room vanished in an instant, replaced by the cold bite of the forest night. Mark tumbled to the ground, his breath knocked out of him as he landed on damp leaves. Gasping, he pushed himself up, blinking in the moonlit darkness. Tall trees loomed overhead, their skeletal branches clawing at the sky. The air was cold and biting, far different from the warmth of his bedroom just moments ago. What? Where am I? Mark stammered, bewildered. A distant sound caught his attention. The shouts of angry voices growing louder, the snap of branches and crunch of leaves as a group of people hurried toward him. Before Mark could process what was happening, torchlights flickered through the darkness, illuminating the faces of the approaching mob. There he is, the witch, someone yelled. Mark's confusion turned to panic as the mob surged toward him, their faces twisted with rage. 
He stumbled backward, raising his hands in a futile attempt to protect himself. Rough hands grabbed him, dragging him to the ground. Sticks and stones rained down on him, blows landing hard against his ribs and back. He tried to scream, to beg for mercy, but his cries were drowned out by the mob's fury. Stop! I'm not a witch! he pleaded, but his words only seemed to incite them further. A sharp blow to the head sent him spiralling into darkness. Mark woke to the acrid stench of burning wood and smoke stinging his eyes. His head throbbed and his limbs were bound tight. He struggled to move, but he realised he was tied to a wooden post. Panic surged through him as he looked down to see a large pile of logs and kindling beneath him. Where? Where am I? He groaned, trying to pull free. A crowd had gathered around, their faces flickering in the torchlight. They were chanting, their eyes filled with a mix of hatred and fear. In front of him stood a tall, thin man with sunken eyes and a long black coat. He leaned in close, examining Mark with a cold, calculating gaze. This is a witch, all right, the man said in a voice that sent chills down Mark's spine. Where did you find him? One of the mob members stepped forward, his voice trembling with excitement. He appeared in the woods, wearing these strange clothes. We caught him before he could cast any spells. The tall man nodded slowly, a twisted smile spreading across his thin lips. Then it's decided. Burn him! No, please! Mark screamed, thrashing against the ropes, but it was no use. The crowd erupted in cheers as the torches were brought forward, their flames licking hungrily at the wood beneath him. The flames ignited, crackling as they climbed higher. The heat seared Mark's skin, his screams piercing the cold night air. The mob watched with cruel satisfaction as the fire consumed him, their chants growing louder until they drowned out his cries. As Mark's screams faded into the crackling roar of the inferno, the tall man turned away, his dark eyes glinting with a strange satisfaction. The mob began to disperse, their bloodlust sated. The tall man, however, lingered at the edge of the clearing, staring thoughtfully at the spot where they had captured Mark. With a slow, deliberate stride, he walked back through the woods. The moonlight filtered through the trees, casting long shadows that danced like spectres. Soon, he came upon a faint glow among the trees, the shimmering edge of the portal that had brought Mark into their world. Without hesitation, the tall man stepped forward, a sinister grin stretching across his gaunt face. The portal pulsed, its light wrapping around him like tendrils, and with a flicker, he was gone. The forest was silent once more, save for the crackling of the dying fire. morning coffee. The police precinct was already a hive of activity, a hum of conversations, ringing phones and the click-clack of keyboards filling the air, but Alex had learned to tune it all out. Years of special military operations had taught him how to find calm in the chaos. A loud thud snapped him out of his thoughts. Chief Marcus O'Reilly, a grizzled man with a permanent scowl etched into his weathered face stood in front of Alex's desk, his eyes blazing with irritation. He threw two folders down, scattering papers across the desk. Two more disappearances, Alex. Happened just last night. People who went to bed and were gone by morning. No signs of forced entry. No nothing. O'Reilly's voice was gravelly, the result of years of chain-smoking and barking orders. Alex picked up the files, flipping through them with a practiced eye. He'd only been with the local police force for a few years, but already he'd earned a reputation for tackling the strange and unexplained. It was, as the chief liked to say, right up his alley. You want me on this? Alex asked, raising an eyebrow. Damn right I do, O'Reilly grunted. These cases are getting weirder by the day. No signs of struggle, no break-ins, just gone. If anyone can figure it out, it's you. Alex nodded, already scanning the details. 
both missing persons had vanished under eerily similar circumstances. Mark Thompson, a middle-aged office worker, and John Reynolds, an accountant. Both had been home with their families, went to bed, and by morning, gone. The witnesses, a wife and a roommate, reported nothing unusual before the disappearances, but the descriptions were vague. The case notes hinted at something odd, something that made Alex's instincts tingle. There was more to this than just people vanishing in the night. All right, Alex said, standing up and grabbing his coat. I'll start with the families. Good, Chief O'Reilly muttered. And Harris, keep me in the loop. I've got a bad feeling about this one. Mark Thompson's house. The drive to the Thompson residence was uneventful. The city bathed in the soft light of early morning. Alex pulled up to a modest suburban home with a well-tended lawn and a swing set in the backyard. As he walked up the driveway, a woman opened the door, her eyes puffy and red from crying. Mrs. Thompson, Alex asked, flashing his badge. Detective Harris, I'm here to ask a few questions about your husband. The woman nodded, wiping her tears. Please, come in. Alex stepped into the cosy living room, the scent of freshly brewed coffee hanging in the air. The kids were upstairs, mercifully unaware of the gravity of the situation. Mrs. Thompson sank into an armchair, wringing her hands nervously. I know this is hard, but can you walk me through what happened last night? Alex asked, his tone gentle but firm. She took a shaky breath. Mark came home late, tired as usual. We had dinner together. He said he needed to get to bed early. Everything was normal. I... No signs of anything unusual, Alex pressed. No noises, no strange lights. She hesitated, frowning. Now that you mention it, I thought I saw a flicker of light under the bedroom door, but I figured it was just the neighbours. It, it felt odd, but I was too tired to think much of it. Thank you, Mrs. Thompson. If you remember anything else, no matter how small... Please call me, Alex said, handing her his card, John Reynolds's apartment. The second stop was a cramped apartment complex in the heart of the city. The roommate, a wiry man named Derek, looked just as bewildered as Mrs. Thompson had. He led Alex into a small, cluttered living room where half-finished takeout containers were scattered across the coffee table. John went to bed around midnight, Derek explained, pacing nervously. I was still up watching TV. Heard him moving around in his room. Nothing weird. But this morning, his bed was empty, his phone and wallet still on the nightstand. Alex's eyes narrowed. You're sure he didn't leave the apartment? No sounds? No visitors? Absolutely sure, Derek said, shaking his head. The door was locked from the inside. I had to break it down this morning when he didn't answer. And there was this weird smell, like burnt... Something, but there was no fire. Burnt, like wood or plastic, Alex asked, scribbling notes. No, not exactly. More like ozone, maybe. I can't explain it. Alex filed that detail away, his mind racing. Two people disappearing without a trace, no signs of forced entry, and now this strange odour. It started to feel like Alex's dreams, strange and supernatural. In those dreams, he was in a crumbling base in an apocalyptic world, overrun by werewolves, vampires, and the undead. A strange man in a chrome mask always watched from the shadows, silent and foreboding. All right, Derek, Alex said, handing him his card. If you think of anything else, even if it seems unimportant, let me know. Back at the station, returning to his desk, Alex spread out the case files, Comparing notes, both disappearances had similarities that couldn't be ignored. The strange lights, the odd smells, the complete lack of physical evidence. It all pointed to something unnatural. A sudden chill ran down his spine as he recalled the strange incidents he dealt with in the past. The dark cases that had made him leave the military in the first place. This had the same feel, the same eerie, inexplicable elements. 
Just as he was about to delve deeper into his notes, his phone buzzed. It was the forensics team. Detective Harris, we've analysed the bedrooms where the disappearances occurred, the technician reported. We found something strange on the walls. Traces of some sort of residue. It's not any substance we've seen before. And there's one more thing. Alex's grip on the phone tightened. What? There were faint burn marks on the floorboards. Almost like scorch marks in a perfect circle. Alex's heart skipped a beat. It was as if the ground had been seared by something. Or opened up. Something was pulling these people into another world. He had seen things like this before, but nothing this calculated. Whatever was happening, it wasn't done yet. Slamming the phone back on its cradle, Alex grabbed his coat once more. This wasn't just a case of missing persons. It was something far darker, something he thought he had left behind when he walked away from the shadows of his past. Whatever was behind these disappearances, it was far from over. And this time... It was up to him to find out why these people were vanishing into thin air before it happened again. Matthew Blake trudged home after yet another long, grueling day at work. The city streets were quiet, shrouded in darkness, uh, with only the dim glow of streetlights piercing the shadows. The cool night air nipped at his skin and he quickened his pace, desperate to reach the comfort of his apartment. As he approached his building, he paused for a moment, feeling a prickle at the back of his neck. Out of the corner of his eye, he glimpsed a shadow, a figure, perhaps, or just a trick of the light. When he turned to look, there was nothing there. The empty street stared back at him, silent and still. Just tired, he muttered to himself shaking off the feeling. Climbing the stairs, he finally reached his apartment and fumbled with his keys. The door creaked open, revealing the dark, quiet space he called home. Living alone, Matthew had grown used to the stillness, but tonight it felt heavier somehow. Ignoring the nagging unease, he grabbed a quick bite from the fridge, not bothering to heat it up, and headed straight to his bedroom. Kicking off his shoes, he collapsed onto his bed, still fully clothed. Exhaustion weighed him down, and within minutes, he was out cold, the stress of the day dragging him into a deep sleep. Midnight. A strange, soft hum pulled Matthew from the depths of slumber. He blinked groggily, his eyes adjusting to a faint light filling the room. Confused, he sat up, trying to understand what he was seeing. The entire bedroom for, was bathed in a swirling, fiery glow emanating from the corner. A portal had appeared, its edges crackling with an unnatural reddish-orange light that danced like flames. On the other side, Matthew could see what looked like a land engulfed in fire, an inferno stretching endlessly in all directions. The heat from the portal was almost tangible, as if it were reaching out to claim him. Is my apartment on fire? Matthew gasped, jumping out of bed. His heart pounded as he rushed towards the portal, his instincts screaming at him to stay away, yet he couldn't tear his eyes from the burning world beyond. The landscape was a nightmarish vision of hell. Charred ground, flames roaring in the distance, and dark smoke swirling into a crimson sky. It looked like a scene straight from a biblical apocalypse the very air thick with the scent of burning sulphur. Panic set in as he realised this was no dream. Desperate to understand, he leaned closer to the portal, squinting into the fiery depths. But before he could pull back, an unseen force grabbed him, yanking him through with a violent jerk. The sensation was like being plunged into an inferno. The world around him twisted, and he landed hard on scorched earth, the heat searing his skin, Gasping, he pushed himself up, the acrid smell of burning flesh and ash choking his lungs. The hellish landscape, Matthew staggered to his feet, surrounded by a desolate landscape of fire and blackened rock. Flames roared all around him, casting flickering shadows that seemed to dance with malevolent glee. 
The ground was cracked and charred, glowing embers rising into the smoke-filled sky. There was no sign of life, only an endless expanse of burning desolation. What? Where am I? He whispered, his voice lost in the roar of the flames. He turned frantically, searching for the portal he had come through, hoping against hope that it was still there, a doorway back to the safety of his apartment. Relief flooded him as he saw the shimmering outline of the portal still hanging in the air behind him. But then, just as he was about to run toward it, he froze. A figure was emerging from the flames on the other side, a tall, humanoid form that stepped slowly through the swirling light of the portal. Its skin was a deep, glowing red, as if it had been forged in the fires of this hellish realm. Horns curled from its skull, and its eyes burned with a sickly yellow glow, like embers in the darkness. The creature grinned as it stepped closer, the portal behind it flickering violently. Matthew's eyes widened in horror as he realised what was happening. The creature was crossing over, into his world. No, no, this can't be happening, Matthew screamed, scrambling backward. The demonic figure took one last step, crossing the threshold into Matthew's apartment. As it did, the portal began to collapse, the fiery glow dimming until it blinked out of existence entirely. The creature was through, leaving Matthew alone in the burning wasteland. Panic surged through him. No, no, no! He yelled, turning to where the portal had been, but there was nothing left. Just an endless sea of fire and smoke with no way out. He was trapped in this nightmarish land, while the demonic creature now roamed free in his world. The hellish landscape seemed to close in around him, the flames growing hotter, the air almost unbreathable. Matthew fell to his knees, despair tightening its grip on him. In the distance, the roar of the flames seemed to take on a mocking tone, as if the very land itself was laughing at his fate. Meanwhile... In a darkened apartment in the city, the creature stood motionless, its yellow eyes glinting with malicious glee. It inhaled deeply, savouring the scent of the human world, a twisted grin stretching across its monstrous face. The hunt was about to begin. The night was dark and heavy the air thick with the scent of rain that had yet to fall. A cloaked figure stood motionless in the shadows, eyes fixed on a dimly lit house at the end of the street. It was the same figure that Matthew had glimpsed out of the corner of his eye on that fateful night. One more, the figure whispered, its voice a low serpentine hiss that barely disturbed the silence. The glowing embers of its yellow eyes flickered beneath the hood, satisfied. The figure melted into the shadows, just as another man approached the house, oblivious to the sinister presence lurking nearby. Inside the house, Thomas Granger pushed through the front door of his small, run-down apartment, letting out a tired sigh. It had been another gruelling day at work, the kind that left his mind numb and his body aching. He flicked on the lights, the fluorescent bulbs flickering, before casting a dim, cold glow across the cramped living space. Kicking off his shoes, he shuffled to the kitchen, fixing himself a quick, reheated meal from the night before. The clock on the wall read 11.36, as he ate in silence, the only sound, the distant hum of the city outside. After a quick shower, to wash away the grime of the day, he collapsed into bed, letting exhaustion take him. The soft embrace of sleep was short-lived. Midnight. A strange, unholy sound ripped through the silence, jerking Thomas from his sleep. It wasn't just a noise. It was a cacophony of groans and moans, a chorus of the damned that seemed to fill the very air around him. His eyes shot open, heart pounding as he looked around in confusion. What the hell? He muttered, sitting up in bed. His eyes were drawn to a swirling light at the foot of his bed. It was a portal, its edges pulsing with a sickly green glow that seemed to ripple like the surface of a disturbed pond. 
But it wasn't just the portal that unnerved him. It was the sound coming from it. The groans were louder now, like the cries of a thousand souls trapped in agony. Thomas covered his ears, but it did nothing to block out the deafening wails. The portal seemed to expand, the light intensifying, and before he could react, he was yanked off his bed and dragged through. The apocalyptic wasteland. Thomas tumbled to the ground, landing hard on cracked asphalt. Gasping, he scrambled to his feet, taking in his surroundings. He was no longer in his bedroom, but standing in the midst of a desolate, ruined city. The air was thick with dust and the stench of decay. Buildings stood like skeletal remains, their windows shattered and walls crumbling. Abandoned cars littered the streets, their rusted frames twisted and broken. The groans were louder here, an omnipresent roar that reverberated through his very bones. He turned frantically, trying to locate the source of the noise, but all he could see were shadows lurking in the ruined structures around him. And then he saw them. From the darkness, they emerged, shambling, decaying figures, with hollow eyes and rotting flesh, oh, the undead. Hundreds, no thousands of them, their lifeless eyes fixated on him. The stench of death rolled off them in waves, a putrid odour that made Thomas gag. They were drawn to him, the scent of fresh life like a beacon in this hellish landscape. Oh God, no, Thomas whispered, turning to run. His footsteps echoed through the empty streets, but no matter where he turned, the undead were there, emerging from the ruins, crawling over cars, spilling out of alleyways. Their groans grew louder, a ravenous chorus that filled the air. He ran, his heart pounding, lungs burning, but it was no use. The zombies were everywhere, closing in like a relentless tide. As he rounded a corner, he came face to face with wall of the undead. They surged forward, their skeletal hands reaching for him, clawing at his clothes, tearing at his flesh. He screamed as he felt teeth sink into his arm, then his legs, his screams drowned out by their insatiable moans. Through the haze of pain and terror, he glimpsed it, the shimmering portal still open behind him. Desperation surged through him as he tried to break free, but it was too late. The zombies overwhelmed him, ripping and tearing until his screams were nothing but gurgled gasps. And then, through the portal... Something moved. A lone figure emerged, stepping through with a slow, deliberate stride. It was one of the undead, but unlike the others, this creature was different. Its eyes glowed faintly, its movements more fluid, more controlled. As it crossed the threshold, the portal snapped shut behind it, leaving Thomas to his gruesome fate in the burning city of the dead. Back in the real world, The undead creature stood still, taking in its new surroundings. The cool, quiet air of Thomas's apartment was a stark contrast to the hellish wasteland it had just left behind. Its dead eyes scanned the room, hunger and confusion mingling in its decayed features. But before it could move, a shadow stirred from the corner of the room. The cloaked figure stepped forward, the dark fabric of its robe whispering against the floor. Its face was hidden save for the eyes that glowed a deep, unnatural yellow. Good, the figure said in a low, cold voice. You have crossed over. The undead creature hissed, its rotten mouth opening wide as if to attack. But before it could move, it froze, a strange, invisible force stopping it mid-lunge. The creature's eyes widened in terror, its skeletal frame trembling as if held by an unseen hand. You are under my command now, the figure said, its voice filled with an otherworldly authority. Come with me. We are almost ready. The cloaked figure turned, the undead creature obediently following behind it, drawn by the power it could not resist. As they left the apartment, the shadows swallowed them whole, leaving no trace of the horrors that had unfolded within those walls. Detective Alex Harris 
sat hunched over his cluttered desk, eyes scanning the missing person's reports that had been piling up over the past week. The fluorescent lights above flickered, casting a cold, sterile glow over the sea of paperwork. The air in the precinct was tense, a constant hum of ringing phones and frantic voices adding to the stress. Two more disappearances had been reported this morning. Two more people who had gone to bed after a long day's work, only to vanish without a trace. No signs of forced entry, no signs of a struggle, just gone. Alex rubbed the back of his neck, a gnawing feeling deep in his gut. He was missing something. He could feel it. Flipping through the reports again, he noticed a common thread that no one else seemed to catch. Each victim had been described as exhausted before they disappeared. Hard working, overworked, exhausted, Alex muttered to himself. He leaned back in his chair, the springs creaking under his weight. He knew exhaustion made people vulnerable, easier to influence. Was someone taking advantage of that? Were these people being manipulated somehow? Detective Harris, a voice called out, interrupting his thoughts. Alex looked up to see Officer Thompson standing by the doorway, a grim look on his face. We've got another one, Thompson said, tossing a new file onto Alex's desk. Brutal murder. Woman found in her apartment. Slashed to pieces. Witnesses say it looked like something straight out of a horror movie. Alex's eyes narrowed as he flipped open the folder. The crime scene photos were grisly. The woman's body torn apart with almost surgical precision. The brutality of the attack sent a chill down his spine. Looks like Jack the Ripper's back from the dead. Someone muttered from across the office, a nervous laugh attempting to lighten the tension. But Alex didn't find it funny. His mind raced. The missing persons, the strange circumstances surrounding their disappearances. And now this. It was as if something or someone was orchestrating these horrors. But who or what could be behind it? Before he could delve deeper into the file, the chaos of the station escalated. Officers were rushing back and forth, phones ringing off the hook. Another report had come in, then another, and another. Detective Harris, we've got another body. A junior officer shouted over the din. A woman found drowned in the lake, but there were no signs of water in her lungs. Alex's eyes widened. How the hell does someone drown without water in their lungs? He muttered under his breath, but there was no time to think. Another officer hurried over with yet another report. A man found dead in his home, strangled, the officer said breathlessly. But get this, there were burn marks, handprints, seared into his neck. The flood of reports continued to pour in. We've got another one, someone yelled. A man found with bite marks, human bite marks all over his body. The precinct was now in utter chaos. Officers were shouting over each other, trying to make sense of the wave of violence that had erupted overnight. The air was thick with panic, confusion spreading like wildfire. What the hell is going on? A rookie officer shouted, looking around in bewilderment. It's like the whole city's gone mad. Alex stood in the centre of it all, his mind whirling as he tried to piece together the fragments of information. Something was wrong, something beyond the ordinary cases he had dealt with in the past. He could feel it in his bones, a darkness, a malevolent force at work, pulling the strings from the shadows. He grabbed the files from his desk, trying to focus amid the chaos. The pieces were there, scattered like a jigsaw puzzle, the missing persons, the strange disappearances, the sudden surge of brutal murders. It all had to be connected. But how? Alex's thoughts were interrupted by another officer rushing over, a look of panic on her face. Harris, you need to see this, she said, handing him a grainy surveillance photo. The image showed the alleyway where the woman had been murdered. In the background, barely visible in the shadows, was a cloaked figure with eyes that seemed to glow faintly. It was the same figure 
Alex had glimpsed in the back of his mind, the same figure that had haunted his thoughts since the disappearances began. Who the hell is that? Alex whispered to himself, his pulse quickening. But before he could dig deeper, a new report flashed across the station's main screen. Mass breakout at the morgue. Deceased bodies missing. The room went silent for a moment as everyone stared at the screen in disbelief. The morgue. Bodies disappearing. The rising tide of violence. It was as if death itself was coming alive in the city. Jesus Christ, what is happening? Chief O'Reilly barked, slamming his fist on the table. But Alex knew, deep down in the pit of his soul, that they were facing something far darker than any serial killer or psychopath. Something ancient. Something that thrived on fear, chaos and despair. And whatever it was, it was just getting started. On the edge of the city, where the lights of civilization faded into darkness, a cloaked figure stood silently, gazing down at the chaos unfolding below. The figure was almost ethereal, its form shifting and blending into the shadows, as if it were not entirely part of this world. A hood concealed its face, but beneath the fabric, two yellow eyes glowed with an unnatural light, piercing through the blackness like twin embers in the night. The figure's gaze was fixed, its attention unwavering as screams echoed faintly from the heart of the city. Fires burned in the distance, sirens wailed, and the air was thick with the scent of fear, all according to plan. A slow, cold smile spread beneath the hood. This will bring him, the figure hissed, its voice barely more than a whisper carried by the wind. When he comes, I will destroy him. I will do it alone as it has always been. The eyes beneath the hood narrowed, glowing brighter. You dared to think you could put fear into me. You dared to mock me in my darkest hour. The figure continued, the words laced with venomous rage. But when you come for me, I will have the perfect portal waiting. A nightmare so deep, so twisted, not even you will escape. A low, sinister laugh escaped from the shadows, a sound that sent chills through the empty streets. The figure's hands clenched into fists, the air around it crackling with dark energy. It was no longer satisfied with manipulating from the sidelines. It was time to take control, to set the final trap. When I am done with him, the figure said, its voice rising to a fevered pitch. When his screams fill the air, you will be next, father. The word dripped with a hatred that had festered for centuries, a promise of vengeance long overdue. The figure's laughter echoed through the darkness, a sound that seemed to twist reality itself, making the shadows deepen and the night grow colder. Part two, coming soon. Who is this shadowy figure? And who does he seek to trap in his web of mystery and danger? Find out in part two of Portals. Coming soon, only on Professor Shadow.